insurance claim declared the ship was rendered foul and leaky, having been retarded by perils of the sea, contrary winds and currents and other mistakes. Affecting the safe passage of its cargo. 440 Africans on board from West Africa to Jamaica. 133 thrown into the sea, 60 dead from fever. Now, Liverpool Assurance covered the loss of £30 per Negro because although Captain Collingwood may have been in want of common care, he was not negligent. However, Robert Stubbs' diary suggests very strongly that the loss arose not from perils of the sea, but from Collingwood's poor judgment. How so? On the voyage, he mistook Jamaica for Hispaniola. The journey took 112 days instead of the 60 days of most middle passage journeys. As a consequence of which they ran out of water. And the slaves jettisoned. There's an appalling loss of life in this. Rest from the quarter deck, shackled together two by two, and weighed down with iron. Eleven jumped into the water voluntarily. Death becomes the best friend you have on such a voyage. You wish its relief. You should know that I'm already requested in this cause. Liverpool Assurance wish to prosecute the owners of the zone for insurance fraud. You're wrong if you think that is the same cause. That is merely a mercenary business about the pecuniary value of Negroes, not their right to live. And in being deprived of their right to live, I intend to prosecute for murder. Forgive me, Mr. Vassar. You were not aboard this ship. You lost no relative on it. I mean to say that no crime has been committed against you. Because I was not murdered myself. Because I survived my own passage, must I stand aside and venture only my good fortune? I am them, Mr. Garrow. I am them. But a prosecution for murder cannot succeed, either at the Old Bailey or the Admiralty Court. Its success will depend upon a jury. I mean, it cannot even be begun, because cargo cannot be murdered. Africans are viewed as no different from other forms of property, like horses and cattle. If you're an attorney, you should know your law. The Somerset ruling gave it out that property can have rights. For a freed slave in England like yourself, perhaps. But not maritime cargo. It is inanimate. I think we can proceed in a way that will satisfy us all. If Mr. Suithouse is to be satisfied, then you will prosecute an insurance fraud. It will help you in your cause. Lose a prosecution for murder and a definitive precedent is set that slaves can be killed at will. But if I can prove the claim to be fraudulent, if I can prove the plea of necessity for those deaths to be false. Then the insurer's interests will be served. Yes, but more than that. Because in future, because of this case, they may find a better way to see those interests served by providing the least possible indemnity for slaves murdered in passage. Instead of 30 pounds for a Negro's head, they will only pay out 20. That is your idea of progress, Mr. Garrow. If it will inhibit the murder of slaves, then yes. So you will inch towards justice and not demand it. If we go in its direction, then yes. I cannot allow myself your patience.
far. The writ is already drawn. On your behalf, I took that liberty. And so it, it merely needs serving. Ah, <sighs> foul weather. I could not hope for better. Who's the man with Hill and Melville? It is of no matter. You know you are not bound to be character witness for Captain Collingwood. I know. I choose it. Oh, come, be honest. The owners of the Zong choose it. The master role of the ship. It was your late nephew's name alongside you. Daniel was his name? I had made assurances to my sister of his welfare. And hard to bear, knowing he may still be alive, but for Collingwood's command. Was that the cause of your dispute? No. No? Daniel's unnecessary death did not distress and vex you. Or was it that there had already been so many unnecessary deaths? I cannot answer you. I was not in attendance when my wife died. I should have been at her bed. But she left this place alone. But, Mr. Castle, you have an opportunity to attend to your nephew again, if you think the truth to suffice. Kelsall is in some difficulty. And are you, Mr. Sutton? The court session is resumed. Come. I have served with Mr. Collingwood when he was ship surgeon and under him when he was captain. And your opinion of him, Mr. Castle? Captain Collingwood is an able man and a good commander. And an honest one. I'm sure of it. My lord, if I may. An honest man. As you are, Mr. Kelso. I should like to think so. Did you have cause to dispute with Captain Conningwood on any occasion? There was none. I remind you, you are under oath, Mr. Kelso. Did you think that Captain Conningwood's misidentification of Jamaica for Hispaniola a mere mistake, an unavoidable accident? My lord. Mr. Kelso is here to bear witness to Captain Collingwood's character. This is pertinent, my lord. Allowed. Answer the question. The mistake having been made, Captain Collingwood took measures as commander. There were only five and a half Dutch butts, three full of sweet water, enough for four days. Hence the jettisoning and everyone put on short allowance. And for some sickly members of the crew, like your nephew, that proved a fatal development, did My it not? My lord! <laughs> What is this to do with the character of Captain Collingwood? I'm trying to get at Mr. Kelso's proper estimation of the man. Then ask a question which demonstrates it. Did you feel that Captain Collingwood's actions were ultimately responsible for the death of your nephew? Was that the reason for the dispute that you will not own to? Was that the reason you were suspended as first mate? It was none of that. Then what was it? What was it you found so hard to take that you could not contemplate? Sir. Some change, Mr. Kelso, some change that made all the difference. It rained, sir. It rained. A heavy downfall on the 30th of November. We collected hundreds of gallons of rainwater. Despite this, on the 1st of December, more slaves were thrown overboard. That was why Captain Collingwood suspended me as first mate. Because I would not go along with it. There was no need to throw over any more blacks. 
There was no want of water. My lord, I wish the jury and the court to note that the witness may have perjured himself and therefore any evidence... How so, Mr. Sylvester? He describes Captain Collingwood as a naval commander, then condemns him. My lord, I would submit that Mr. Kelso did not perjure himself. Captain Collingwood is an able commander. If, as the captain of a slaver, his duty is to make a profit, he did so by ridding himself of slaves that were unlikely to fetch what they were insured for. In that, he has been most able. worthy of observation that our legislator can every session find time to inquire into and regulate the manner of killing a partridge that no abuse be committed that he be shot fairly well we shall let that be I'm not required to direct you on slaves as goods but merely whether these goods were jettisoned voluntarily or in necessity. The claim of necessity was false and fraudulent if they were thrown over after the rain, about which you now must decide. <laughs> You have reached a verdict? We have. How do you find the prisoner charged with this indictment? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. <laughs> but we humbly make recommendations for mercy. <laughs> My Lord, we also wish to make a recommendation to mercy. Liverpool Assurance do not wish to take a moral position in this action. Very well. Captain Collingwood, I sentence you to two years imprisonment. You will be put on a hulk ship. Lord shall rise. Do you mock me, Bola? The law will not do your bidding. No, I confound Mr. Garrow for you. I do not need the law when I have the consent of decent Englishmen. Man who showed no mercy receives the mercy of his English peers. There were but twelve men there. Not a country. And I hope the country will make its own verdict. Are very satisfactory. You are easily satisfied, I think. Is not fraud discouraged here? And murder also, I would venture. You are no longer mindful of your opportunities in the North. I'm too mindful of how I have scraped, bowed, and pleased these last few weeks. It is even less pretty than when you are curmudgeonly. Oh, I know nothing of that. <laughs> William Garrow, you have business with me, sir? You are served with a writ from the Court of King's Bench in the name of an action for damages by Sir Arthur Hill. For the act of criminal conversation with the plaintiff's wife. 